Yo, what's up? We're gonna have a look at how to fix the Samsung washer dryer FE error. So if you've got a Samsung washer dryer and it looks different from this one, don't be too alarmed as the principle and what we're gonna fix will run across different models that Samsung has. They're sort of on the same platform when they were in the factory. So this fix will cross over to certain newer models and older models as well. FE error can be fixed with a few tools that you need, a Phillips head screwdriver, flat head screwdriver, and possibly a new part. But before we get to those new parts, we're gonna check a couple of things first. And the biggest thing that you'll see when you get the FE error is the FE sign on your dryer. Whenever you set that to a drying cycle, the first thing that comes up is FE on the display, like you're seeing with this one, and it's got that blaring sound that's telling you that there's an error on your washer. To fix it, we're gonna need to disconnect the power that goes to the washing machine, but of course, we need to switch it off first. So switch it off on the main display here. Then you're gonna go ahead and turn it off at the plug and unplug it. I say unplug because sometimes you might think you've turned it off and it's not actually turned off or someone might come and turn it on without you knowing. We don't want you to get shocked. You want to be safe first. So safety first, make sure you unplug it. Then we can go ahead and go along with the rest of this repair. To access our heating part of the washing machine, we need to take off the top cover. To take off the top cover, you need to work from the back of the washing machine. So I'm gonna turn around my washing machine so that you can see the screws that you're gonna to need to take off to be able to access your heating part of the dryer. Now I've had people in the past before ask me, how were you able to remove being such a big washing machine? It's all about technique. So there's four feet that are holding your washing machine down that it's sitting on. You wanna try and walk it because it's gonna, it's a fairly heavy unit. There's two of you, you can definitely do it together. There's handles on the side of the washer which you can easily hold one on the other side, one on the other side and turn it around. But if you're working alone, all you need to do is you need to sort of manhandle it and make it sit on one leg like that. So I've got mine on one leg and you're using that sort of as a pivot point. And there you go. Fairly heavy, so please be, do, be careful when you're moving it around. Don't hurt yourself. You only get one back. And if you screw it up, that's bad. So at the back of the washer, you've got two screws that are holding this top bit on there. So the just two screws that we're gonna focus on is these two, one and two. So go ahead, grab your Phillips head screwdriver and remove those two screws. Once you've removed those, the top cover slides out. So you just slide it out. So some of them might be really tight because it's the first time for you to be opening it and taking it out. So you gotta give it a bit of a shove and then it comes out just like that. Once it's, you slide it out, you just lift it off and set it to the side. Once you've got it open, then you can access your dryer. So this is your dryer part. So this is where the heating element is and that's the cover for it. And this is your fan. So that's what's giving you that FE error. So you wanna make sure that we're changing this. 
So this is the fan that controls the air that will be going, that produces the air that's gonna go into the drum and help you to dry. So that's what creates that FE error. To remove it, there's a couple of screws that you're gonna need to remove all around the dryer. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and there's two tricky ones which are sort of at the back here. Those are tricky because you just don't get them there easily. So you're gonna need a, sort of a, a longer screwdriver that's gonna be able, probably magnetic as well, because you're gonna you don't wanna be fishing for your your fan, your your fan screws. So make sure that you've got maybe a magnetic one and then that way you won't be looking for where you drop the screw. Before you start taking things apart, you want to make sure that you disconnect these power cables. And if you ever forget where they go, you can always just rewind this video or take a picture. Pictures say more than a thousand words, so probably better to take a picture and then you can remember how it was before. So just disconnect these connections and you can see how important it is, it is to disconnect the washing machine first before you start taking all these things apart. Otherwise there'll be power coming to these and then you'll get shocked. And then there's another cable that goes to your dryer here. So you wanna make sure that you're taking all those things off. So now that you've got all your screws out, this simply comes off by lifting it out. Now it'll be a bit tight because you haven't taken it off before. There's a gasket that holds it in place. So that might be a bit tight when you try to take it out. Obviously, there we go. Okay. <laughs> and I'll show you why mine wasn't working. As you can see, mine is just seized. This is supposed to be free spinning and it's not. It's just stuck. There's, there's nothing that's gonna happen here. Nothing, forget it. So that's why it was giving me the FE error. You wanna make sure that you replace that. And you can usually find some on eBay. Just type in your model number for your washing machine. And you can usually buy secondhand ones. There's no problem with that. I'll show you what a free spinning one should be like. It's like that, it should be able to Spin it like that. Whereas mine, it's not even moving. You have to force it. So that is why it gave that error. And you don't want to keep forcing it because then you might damage the, the board. So you want to make sure that you're doing it proper. Looking at these two, you want to change, you want to move these over. These are your sensors to uh, protect it from overheating. You want to move these onto your new or your secondhand heat dryer fan. So when you search in Google or on uh, eBay, you're supposed to search for Samsung washing machine model number da 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 dash dryer fan. So you want to make sure that you're looking for that and then you'll get something like this. They usually don't fail like this, but this is a case where I think a bit of moisture has gone in there and then it's messed up with it. You can see there's a lot of rust in there. You're gonna need to clean it up a bit, get a, um, a file and just file it out a bit so that you're not, um, you're not allowing like dirt and rust to keep going on in there because as it goes, that rust will keep rusting and then it will definitely get to these other parts and then air will be escaping and then it doesn't dry properly. So you wanna make sure that you are cleaning up that rust with the sandpaper or something. So what you wanna do then is maybe clean it up. After you've cleaned it up, get some anti-rust um, metal protection to put on there because you don't want it to rust once it starts drying up because you can imagine there's steam passing through that. So you wanna make sure that you properly coat that and make sure that there's no 
rust that's gonna start forming again. To put it back, you simply do the opposite of what you did to take it out. Just be mindful of that um, cable. And it sits in like that. Make sure that you haven't pinched any cables and stuff. And there you go, it just sits on there nicely. And what I like to do before I get carried away is I like to just usually test to make sure that the fan that I've put on there is working. Otherwise, I'm just going to go through all this trouble and then later find out that my new second hand fan is not working. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this one right in. Well, before I plug everything in, I uh, probably need to put these back on. Let's try to remember where everything went. Put that there, put that there. Put that there. Put that there. So just a rough fit, right? We're not going too crazy. So the, usually when you start the dryer, the first thing that goes on is the fan. So if you start your dryer and you don't hear the fan, the sound of the phone turning, that means that you've got an error with your fan. So I'm just gonna go right on to the dry cycle. And I'm gonna turn off the spin and make it start. I wanna hear how that goes. So you're just waiting. That sound that you hear, it's it's the the pump. We don't hear the sound of the the fan. I can hear it now. I can feel it. So the trick here is not to touch the electrical stuff, but all the like the this other stuff, like this plastic. This is what you need to touch, and. I touched it and I can hear it as well. I'm sure you can hear it as well going. So that means that my my fan's good. I can hear it's going. That means that there's no more point fan error for me. So that's a sure way to check that your fan is working. And once your fan starts working, the heater should start kicking in. Now, I'm used to doing this, so I know where to touch, but don't touch where you don't know, all right? You can hear the sound you know and you can hear that the fan is working properly so that put that in and then we're going to put our screws back in turn it off and as before we're going to turn it off on the wall and we're going to unplug it as well safety comes first now that we're done with putting back all the electrical connections on our heater. We found out our heaters, uh, our fans working, our heaters working. We're no longer getting that FE error. We're gonna put back the back, the top cover. So just make sure all your connections are secure. And then to put this back, you simply slide it in. It's like a shelf sort of thing. So it just slides in and you have to give it a bit of a shove so that it's sort of clips into place and just check the front make sure that it's not like lifting up once you've done that grab your screws the two screws one goes on the left and one on the right and that should be it put it in like that and once you're done plug it in let's see 
if our fixes worked, if we're still getting that FE error, of course we've checked before to make sure that it's not giving that error. So we'll turn it on. And usually if you select the drying cycle and turn off the spin speed, you can immediately get the drying process started on some models because Samsung spends about 20 minutes spinning the drum, spinning dry the clothes so that you can get a good dry. But if you've already done that, like we want to test to make sure that the fan's working. So there's no need for us to spin and there's not, there's nothing in there. So we just want to make sure that our fix has worked. Confirm that the fix has worked, which we did before. And hey, I post a lot of videos on how to fix these machines. So if you have a problem with your Samsung washing machine later on in life or a friend's one is in trouble, be sure to have me in your inbox and then hey, I can solve, save you a lot of headaches and save you a lot of money trying to find out how to fix certain errors. So I don't only deal with Samsung, I also do LG, Bosch, Melee. So if you have any questions or are curious about some other models that you have problems with, be sure to leave a comment in the section, comment section below. If you ever get stuck during this process, be sure to leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll help you. And hey, if you're successful in fixing your washer dryer, please let me know. I love to hear how people are able to fix their washers and get back to washing again. Saving the planet one washing machine at a time, saving your wallet one washing machine at a time. So thanks for tuning in. I'll see you on the next one.